in this problem we have a wheel that is um, rotating and we're asked to find first um, given the conditions the reaction forces of a uh, long link AB and the normal force that's acting between the wheel and the ground and then we're asked to find given an initial um, angular velocity what is their time required to come for the wheel to come to a complete stop we're given the coefficient of friction and the geometry along with the mass and we're also given the radius of gyration of the um, wheel so like always you have to start with a free body diagram so we're going to start with the wheel and this is going to have its weight at the center this is going to be um, FG then we have our normal force at the bottom this we're going to call N and um, we're going to draw in omega which is going in this direction so if omega is going in that direction then our force of friction must be going in this direction okay opposite to omega all at this point here and then we have the uh, force the reaction force of the link um, which is going to be along link AB this we're going to call F A B okay and this is going to be uh, at an angle theta so again positive x to the right positive y upwards positive rotation counterclockwise okay so this is our free body diagram of the wheel so from this we can and remember this force is going to be along link AB because link AB can only carry axial forces so there can't be a force perpendicular so it's all got to be parallel to that so we're given the direction of that force okay so let's start with um, some forces in the x direction these are going to be equal to zero because there's going to be no acceleration uh, of the center of gravity of that wheel okay uh, so uh, we're going to get the following And this is going to be equal to zero. So we're taking the x component um, of this force and we're taking the force of friction because these two forces, Fg and n, are perpendicular or vertical, so don't act in the x direction. Then we can take a sum of forces in the y direction, and again, same thing, no acceleration. Um, and uh, we get the following. So f of a, b sine theta is going gonna, is gonna to be positive minus um, fg plus n equals zero and uh, then we are going to have the sum of moments and again for sum of moments we can do it about any point um, but um, we're going to take uh, b because b is the point that has most of the forces going through it so we can cancel out FAB, FG, and N because they have no radius and so that's going to simplify our equation a lot also we're removing the force with an angle so we don't have to do a complicated cross product and this is going to be equal to I alpha we do have an angular acceleration in this case um, so what this yields is F of F times the radius because f of f, we need this distance here. That's the radius of the circle, uh, of the wheel, sorry. It's going to be equal to i at b times alpha. Okay. So now we can start uh, plugging stuff in and solving for these equations. So the first thing is we need to find i b, um, which is easy to find because we have the radius of gyration so IB is M times the radius of gyration squared um, so that's going to be equal to 
five kilograms times um, 0 0.2 meters squared, which is equal to 0 0.2. Now we have IB, um, and we can solve, we have uh, the following unknowns, alpha, um, force of friction, and F of AB, uh, along with N. So we need one more equation, and that is, so this is equation one, equation two, equation three, and we have equation four, which is the force of friction is equal to mu k times the normal force. So now we have four equations, four unknowns, and we can solve uh, the system of equations, and um, it yields the following. FAB equals to 18.4 Newtons. Uh, N is equal to 39.8 Newtons. And then we have um, F of F is equal to 0 0.4 Newtons. Um, and alpha is equal to 11.96. Radians per second square. So these first two over here are part of the final answer because these are the values for the reaction forces at the linkage and at the bottom. But we're not done yet. We also are given an initial velocity or angular velocity and we're asked to find given um, this friction coefficient and, and given this geometry how long does it take to stop okay so um, we've calculated alpha which we will need for this calculation because um, we know that um, we have an initial velocity that omega that is going this way um, and um, as time goes on, this um, friction uh, will cause a deceleration. So omega goes this way, but alpha is actually in the opposite direction, which is slowing down um, the um, wheel. Okay, so we know that the formula for um, uh, to relate omega and alpha in time, obviously, is omega equals to the initial velocity. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus alpha times the time. Okay, and we know that um, omega is going to be equal to zero radians per second because that's the final velocity we want it to stop. Uh, we have omega naught. Omega naught is equal to 30 radians per second. We're given this in the question. And we know that alpha is 11.96 radians per second squared. So in this equation, we can essentially just solve for time. So now we can plug everything into this equation. We have 0 radians per second is equal to 30 radians per second plus alpha, which is negative 11.96 radians per second squared times t. And remember we need this negative here because um, alpha and omega are in opposite direction. So omega is um, going in the clockwise direction, alpha is counterclockwise. Okay, so again it doesn't really matter if this is negative or if um, this is negative, um, but one of them needs to be negative. Okay, or else you would end up with a negative time, which is uh, not possible. Okay, so if we solve this, we solve for t and we get that t is equal to 2.5 seconds. And so this is the time required for um, the angular velocity to go from 30 to um, 0 radians per second.